The Spana Norden 901 Expedition. It's an off-spec model of the original, which came out last year, which itself is built from the bones of the KTM 890 Adventure. But is there more to this bike than simply being a better dressed version of the original? Let's take a ride and find out. This video is sponsored by Lindstrands and Alvarsons, who have kindly provided my jacket and my gloves for this video. Whether we've been riding through sleet and rain in the British winter or basking in glorious summer sunshine, we've been able to rely on their gear to keep us warm, dry and comfortable in the saddle. So check out more of their gear via the link in the description of this video. So, as far as Norden 901 Expedition, it's uh, an up spec model of the base Norden 901, which uh, came out, it was released last year, only last year, and essentially the same bike, but with a few rather crucial differences as it turns out. So, chief among them, is the new suspension, the WP Explore uh, front and back, which is fully adjustable for uh, reload, uh, rebound, compression, and preload, uh, and offers 240 mils of travel front and back. So this is the same suspension, more or less, that's in the KTM 890 Adventure R. Uh, and of course the Norton is based off the KTM 890 range with the same engine, essentially the same frame structure. Uh, and I guess that's one of the questions that, you know, people ask with the Norton. What is the difference between this and the KTM? And essentially the Norden is a bit more of a classy touring version of the 890 Adventure. Uh, it's got more of the road-focused creature comforts that the 890 somewhat lacks. Uh, but then the Expedition has taken that base Norden ethos and kind of raised it up a level with that suspension and then chief among them as well that big old screen right in front of us. I mean that screen is just sublime compared to what you get on the 890 Adventure and on the Base Norden. Alright, let's say goodbye to these folks. Uh, so I've just come back from a trip to Ireland on this bike and just under a thousand miles on it on that trip and wow that screen is like spot on for, for motorway speeds, for touring and rain, wind. You know, there's very, very, very minimal wind glass buffeting. You know, I'm wearing a, an RI helmet with the peak. It's one of those things you don't quite notice uh, until, until you go to a different bike without the same amount of fairing. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, I've, I've been missing how quiet and comfortable this bike is. and. Essentially, that's what this bike offers a lot of, is comfort and subtlety in a sense. You know, there's not a lot about it that gets into your face. A lot of it works underneath you and works with you uh, to provide a really great ride. Some things somewhat slip under the radar, but when you pay attention to them, Husqvarna's has really nailed them with the Norden. And so the, the comfort aspect, you know, this seat, the way it flares towards the tank and towards the rear and then cinches in at the middle provides for an incredibly comfortable and uh, tactile seating position. Because you kind of, you sit down, your knees get locked either side of the, uh, the top of the tanks, but then it flares out towards the back and you get a really wide seat. So on long distances, you are, your bum doesn't start to get pressure points and if it does you can easily kind of adjust your uh, seating position to relieve those, that pressure and there's infinite ways you can sit on it really it's not a narrow dirt bike style seat it's a really plush 
almost sofa-like experience, which is brilliant for long distances. But then also because of that, the way it flares out and then cinches in, it's also great for off-roading when you want to lock your knees in and uh, have that control with your knees and if you're standing up. So it's one of those things, because it's so comfortable, you almost don't notice how good it really is, but it is a really, really comfortable bike. And the, and the seating position overall, the, the posture of it is great. You know, arms, arms out, elbows out. It's, it's responsive and you've got control, but without being exerting. It doesn't exert any pressure to sit here. And uh, part of this is also due to the, uh, the fantastic balance of the bike. So it's got the 19 litre fuel tanks underslung like on the KTM 890. So they drop down and provide excellent center of gravity. Uh, and generally the, the center of gravity and the weight is kept very low on the Norden. So you get fantastic, you know, balance on this bike. You can like, it just rolls along. And, uh, you know, for such a, it's a pretty heavy bike. It's about 229-ish kilos wet, I believe. Um, and yeah, for such a heavy bike, it holds its weight. Maybe not quite as posed as the KDM 890 is, uh, particularly off-road, but it still is a truly well-balanced bike. So overall, when you're riding it, it's just relaxing. You don't have to ride the bike the way it wants you to ride. You can ride the bike how you want to ride it. Uh, due to that excellent stability, comfort, there's a tractor. Keeping our, keeping food on our tables. Hats off to you, sir. Uh, while I prance about on a motorbike. But uh, yeah, it's a phenomenal, phenomenally well-balanced bike. Now, aside from the screen and the suspension, you get a lot of creature comforts with this bike that you don't get on the base Norden. Uh, so they include heater grips, three levels, heated seat, three levels, and they are both Yep, they're, they're, they're pretty good as far as heated, heated equipment goes. Uh, I use them extensively throughout Ireland through some pretty heavy Irish rain uh, and along some chilly blasts on the motorways fairly late into the night, you know, 10.30, 11 o'clock. And uh, on max setting, you know, they, they crank out a fair bit of heat. On the lowest setting, which they're on now, uh, still, uh, they provide just enough heat to keep your hands from getting warm. You know, I've got my summer gloves on, and so my hands are just nice and temperate right now. So, yeah, the heater grip, heater grips and seat are very well conditioned. The pillion doesn't get a heated seat, but who cares about them anyway? Uh, and I guess on the subject of being a two-up bike. You know, they do get a nice, comfortable seat back there, but it's not really designed with two up in mind, you know. Uh, that is kind of evidenced by that lack of heated seat for the pillion. And, you know, it functions very well if you do want to take someone on the back, but there would be better choices to take. This is definitely designed more with a solo rider in mind. It doesn't live up to the expedition name that they've attached to the Norden. And yeah, I would I would definitely take this on a long tour over the base model, without a doubt. Both for off-road abilities and for touring. I guess what has been sacrificed with these extra creature comforts and the better suspension and the screen is the bike is heavier and taller now so the seat height at its highest setting is 895 mils and uh, the lowest setting is 875 uh, so I believe that's about 20 mils higher than the base Norton is 
which does make it a very tall bike. And now even though the seat does flare in, it still does spread your legs out. So, you know, I'm about five foot eight and I, this is very much a tiptoe kind of bike for me. It's a bit of a balance act when I'm trying to get my feet down. So if you're on the taller side, it's a, it's a perfect bike for you. If you're on the shorter side, you'll, uh, you'll want to have a good sense of balance, let's say, uh, when you come into a stop. And I guess that's also kind of a difference between this expedition and the base Norton is the base Norton's more approachable for people. This is a bit more, it's higher spec and it's also demands somewhat maybe higher skill set for riding with that extra weight. It, it, it's, it's designed for people who are a bit more confident that they will be going off-road, they will be tackling more difficult terrain uh, and that they will be going longer distances. You know, if, if you're after a, a really good middleweight bike and you don't need, you know, week-long touring conveniences or really great off-road performance, Base Lord, you know, that's a, still a very fine choice. You know, with the Norden, that was always the idea, the original one. It was pretty comfortably split between being a great off-roader and also a really comfortable touring bike. It wasn't necessarily better at one or the other, and it's much the same with this. Uh, so, one of the biggest changes and the best additions to the uh, expedition is the large windscreen that comes to standard. And you know, I've ridden this through some pretty bad Irish rain and motorway blasts quite late at night. And this screen works absolute wonders. You know, if I put my hand here, there's this just vacuum of air. There's nothing there. And I put my hand here. I can only feel the wind just gracing my fingertips there. I've got my visor open. There's barely any wind getting into my eyes. Brilliant screen and really, really adds to the functionality of the Norden as a, as a touring bike and just generally as a bike you want to ride around. You know, that original Norden had that stubby little one which wasn't the best and same with the 890 Adventures, you know, they've got a smaller screen, not as much fairing. So, in terms of a touring bike in that range, this is, this is brilliant. That screen adds so much. And of course, there's I just can't believe that this is very much an expedition bike. And that's why, with the prototype, they sent Cyril Dupree, the legendary Dakar champion, and uh, Mike Horn, who's an epic adventurer. You know, he's done some amazing things across the globe. And it's kind of sent both of them on expeditions, on an expedition in Mongolia. And they filmed it all, and it's, it's incredible footage of them, you know, abseiling the Nord down the sides of cliffs and riding alongside wild packs of horses and cutting through the snow of the Mongolian steppe. It's a brilliant film. And Cyril Dupree will actually be at the AVR Festival 2023 showing, hosting a screening of that film. Uh, and he'll be available there. You can meet him, you can ask questions. He'll be happy to answer everything. There'll be an intimate Q&A session with Cyril Dupree. So if you ever fancy meeting a five-time Dakar champion, picking his brain for what makes a great rider and hearing his stories about exploring South America and Africa and Mongolia, then that's your chance. Uh, there's a few tickets left to get to the ABR Festival 2023. It's on the 23rd to the 25th of June this summer at Ragley Hall in Warwickshire. So he's just one of dozens of inspiring speakers of the adventure biking world. So get your tickets before they're sold out because this is a fantastic opportunity to meet a legend, legendary rider. So back to the Nord. <clears throat> you know, one thing I would say is it's not really a commuting bike. And what I mean by that is it is incredibly balanced and it trundles along fantastically at low speeds and it is very high so you have a very commanding view of the traffic and overall the bike looks amazing you know I was always a fan of the original Norton you know a lot of people have come back 
saying that, oh, you know, the Norden has always been a bit of a different look, but it was always a bit divisive from what I could tell. Some people really liked the look, some people hated them. But I loved the original Norden. I think it was a really cool, sort of retro, sort of just something different. And when I saw the pictures for this one, I thought, well, I already like the old one. It looks cool, but it doesn't look like, you know, people had completely about face thought it was such a stunning bike. And I thought, yeah, it looks cool still. But then I got up close to this one and wow, you know, the, the, the blue pops and the topographic stickers on the side of the tank, they just look incredible, you know, these beautiful lines, and just these little highlights. And it's a stunning, stunning bike up close. So this is our chance for a bit of off-roading in the Cotswolds. So let's uh, put it into let's put it in off-road mode and have a little spin. Standing up, standing up position is really, really responsive, I would say. And uh, you know you've got quite an aggressive stance almost, you're quite far forward but you've got a great control over the bike it's a very tall bike you know so you've got a real great view ahead of you, you're looking right over the windscreen you may have bottomed out the suspension a little bit there but yeah with that with the rider aids on the off-road mode I find it really the electronic package works really really nicely Oh, should have worn my goggles for this one. But the bike just hums along lovely when it gets a little bit slippery. You know, it gives enough wheel spin to get through some trickier parts without uh, locking up with the ABS off. Uh, let's see what's up here, shall we? trying to avoid mangling my GoPro. Dan would be very angry. But yeah, the bike just loves to, oh shit squirrel, loves to play around in this. And you've got lovely control, the suspension feels great, it's responsive. But it is such a poised bike off-road. It is so much fun to ride. Yeah. It is so well poised off-road. It does just want you to just, you know, give it, give it a little bit more, just a little bit more. So, I'm not trying to hurt you by any stretch, but just wants to see what you can do because this bike can do a lot. And uh, feels like I've got some grass or a tree stuck in my helmet, but what can you do? Tractor man, good thing I didn't run into him. All right, well, let's get back into street mode and let's wrap this mother up. So, after a thousand miles in the saddle, including a trip to Ireland where I stuffed the panniers full of my camping gear and set off for some epic mountain road adventures. I found the Norden to be an incredibly classy, comfortable and capable adventure bike. It's packed to the brim with tweakable rider aids, top shelf suspension and creature comforts which make it a wonderful bike to ride. Whether you're cruising along the motorway, carving up mountain passes or tackling some gnarly green lanes. For only £900 you get a wealth of upgrades which elevate it from the stock Norden into a truly capable all-rounder which will give you as much as you're willing to put in.